In this video, I'm going to get real with you and share the most rudimentary but revealing test you can do on your business. I guarantee you that this test is the fastest way to figure out exactly what the focus of your marketing strategy should be for the next year. Hello and welcome to season two on the channel, the one where you start building a fundamentally stronger business. I suggest you subscribe or this puppy gets it. When I was researching the best marketing strategy techniques in prep for our season two on this channel, one of the things that struck me was how some of the suggestions in some of these marketing books were just these theory-based busy work that were designed with the large budget corporate businesses out there. We're not leading corporate businesses and we definitely don't have the budgets they have to afford dedicated marketing departments and marketing managers. Is this enough to justify us not having marketing strategies and plans in our business? is no in fact we have an incredibly important reason to have both of these things not only do we have to budget our business spend on our marketing efforts but we also have to budget your time and attention as the driver behind the business a realistic straight shooting marketing plan is what will give you the direction comfort and structure now since we don't have the budgets all the time to pull in data and do complex analytics on all of this right now, I'm going to give you a three-part assessment that I need you to answer. There's a common factor to all of these three parts. I wonder if you can figure it out before I tell you at the end. Let's get straight to the assessment. First thing I want you to do is open a private search browser such as Incognito and search your business on Google. You're doing the whole Incognito thing because you don't want any cookies or previous searches to influence what Google shows you in your search result. The question is, as a business, are you on the first page or are you on the second page? Do you even show up? Take a note of this and the date of your search. Now, maybe open another tab, test some different configurations that you think your potential customers would be putting into Google. And again, track where, if anywhere, your business features in the search results. Some options that I have used include the company name plus some of the product names you sell, or if you're a store, you could try the industry, e.g. a DIY store, and then add the town or the city that you're located in, and let's see where you come up. I have also done matching analysis for my top three competitors to see how they fare in similar researches. Question is, what comes up? The goal is to see what impacts your Google placement and the search terms your business is or isn't connected to. Remember to also note the search terms that you're testing. You're going to want to do the exact same search monthly or quarterly to see how things changed. Based on what you expect from your business and in comparison to your competitors, how do you rate in your business in this part of the assessment? Poor, could be better, on track or exceeds expectation. Now the second part of the assessment. I told you this was really simple. What I want you to find out is what's being said about your business online. Here you're going to need to look at any articles, tweets, Instagrams, TikToks or anything else you can think of. You want to take a note of the good, the bad, and the ugly about what's being said about your business. So this is all the stuff that you haven't written. Take note, don't push anything under the carpet. We need to face it all. I would do the same analysis on your three closest competitors again. And based on what you expect from your business and your comparisons to your competitors, can you rate yourself as a part of this assessment? What would you rate yourself as? Poor, could be better, on track, or exceeds expectations. Right. Now we move on to the final part. The final part of the assessment is for you to look at everything you do from your website, social media, and even the pre-sales communication your company has with your customers and ask, is your message consistent across all these platforms? Are you coming across as one company or does it seem like you have different personalities on the different platforms? So it's really important that you critically analyze what you're putting out. As with the other parts of the assessment, repeat the analysis for your competitors and based on your results and what you find, can you rate your business? Are you poor, could be better, on track, or do you exceed expectations? Right. Have you figured out the common component of this assessment? This whole assessment is designed to look at your business solely from the perspective of your customer. See, one thing that doesn't change whether you're a corporate or a scrappy bootstrap business is whether our customers buy from us or not has a direct correlation with how they see us. Now, because we want to only spend our time and effort on the stuff that's really gonna have the biggest impact on our bottom line, we have to stand in our customers' shoes and take a harsh but incredibly powerful reality check of what they see when they look at our business. At its core, this is what we want as a business. One, to be featured close to the top of the first page of Google search, so we know our customers can find us when they need us. Two, 
have customers so pumped about our service that they're talking about us positively on socials. Side note, whilst negative press isn't ideal, there's a real argument that nobody talking about you at all is as bad, if not worse, because it means you're replaceable. Three, you have a consistent message across all sales and marketing touch points, so you feel like one well put together outfit. If you performed lower than on track on any of the three parts of this assessment, know that this is what you need to fix ASAP. Even for big brand businesses, the customer can influence companies to make surprising yet impactful business moves, something which I demonstrate in this video about Smeg's marketing strategy. I would recommend you to watch this next. In the meanwhile, as always, you've got this.